Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tracy Snyder, and I am speaking you to you today as a concerned citizen of Commerce City. And while I am very much in favor of the Boys and Girls Club and in support of, as all of the charities, we support all of the charities in Commerce City, I am against financing their new building in a way that will negatively affect our citizens and businesses. The City Council of Commerce City voted 8 to 1 against placing the measure on the ballot. We were honored and very proud to have the Mile High Music Festival in Commerce City. And the ballot initiative, this ballot initiative, would put the festival and many other potential opportunities at great risk. I would strongly urge the voters to vote no on 2A. And with that, I will introduce Susan Kochevar, who is the owner of the 88th Avenue Drive-In in Commerce City. Thank you, Tracy. Uh, Drive-in movie theaters are celebrating 75 years this year. In 1957, drive-ins were at their height. There were over 4,000 drive-ins. Today, there are less than 400 of us remaining in the United States. The loss of the Cinderella drive-in last year meant that Commerce City was the home of the only remaining drive-in in the Denver metropolitan area. For 35 years, the drive-in has provided low-cost entertainment to the metro area and jobs for Commerce City residents. Many people do not know that movie studios take most of our box office for admissions. That is their fee. This means that we rely on our snack bar to survive. An 8% tax would be added to our admission tickets. Like Dick's Sporting Goods, which is a big company, we're a very small company, the result would be less ticket sales for us, which translates into less snack bar sales and the customers that do attend the movies will have less money to spend in our snack bar as a result of the tax. This tax would really hurt us and very likely cause us to close. Please help keep low-cost entertainment, jobs, and a small part of American history alive in Commerce City. Please vote no on 2A. Thank you. <coughs> Okay, in conclusion, before we take some questions, uh, if you'd like, um, as you can see, Commerce City's elected leaders, the operators of Dick's Sporting Goods Park, and uh, many Commerce City residents, which we would have brought a whole time, but we don't have the room, but believe me, we've been inundated by phone calls, um, agree that the tax increase proposed in 2A is the wrong way to raise money for a very good and charitable organization, one that I've always supported. But we support a lot of charitable organizations, and I... I I hope people will carefully consider this proposal as you vote, and we collectively ask that you reject two eight, the 2 eight tax increase, or tax, it's not even an increase, it's a brand new tax. So I'll, I'll take, any of us will take any questions you'd like to have. Uh, Chuck, um, where does the campaign go from here, your campaign against 2 eight? What are you guys going to do to get this out to even more people? Well, we hope you guys here will put it on television and, and radio and newspapers are all here. And we are going to do some mailings next week. And we are going to have some, some uh, signs that we're going to put up with people's permission and explain what it can do and, and do some phoners uh, to the residents of Commerce City. We'll, but, also, we'll, also, use, we'll also use the uh, game on the 25th out of Dick's Sporting Goods Park, the Rapids game, as a vehicle to educate the consumer. So okay. we'll have uh, handouts and other uh, signage opportunities. There. You know, even in, even in your worst case scenario, that's the, the, the price increase is the cost of a beer and a hot dog at the Mile High Music Festival. Do you think fans are really that precarious whether they're not going to go because of that much of a price change? Well, I think 15 or $16 is a huge amount. We've been debating this year whether we'd even increase it at all. And watch the news and read the newspapers. We are in the worst recession slash depression in my lifetime and every dollar that increases we see I mean we take we do charts we see what it does for our ticket sales we run we do a lot of concerts in this town a lot of, we control a couple of clubs and we see it and it is it could be very detrimental when the bands are asking for so much money and people don't have as much yeah I think it, it's detrimental enough that I'm gonna have to take a very serious look at moving the festival to another location then will you keep the prices flat both on mile high and on uh, uh, soccer tickets? Well, I can't answer for the soccer team, but I can answer that it's it's still based on some of the quality of the acts and how much they charge us, but we are going to try like heck to keep it 
close to what it was last year because we thought it was a great bargain seeing 46 bands for $75 a day plus charges. Um, and, the, and, you know, doing 90,000 people, and it was my understanding it was the fourth biggest musical event in the United States for a first year. Um, people answered that question whether they wanted to spend that kind of money, but increasing it um, <coughs> like that scares me to death. And I am, you know, I've been inundated. There was one new, newspaper story in one of the papers, honey. I've been inundated with calls from people that want to, you know, to have land in, in Denver and in other close cities that want to talk to us about moving it there which doesn't surprise me. You know, when we, had a, when we decided that we did not want to do City Park, everyone's familiar with it because of um, the zoo didn't feel comfortable with the safety of the animals, we announced um, dicks within a week and a half. And, you know, I didn't last in this business for 38 years without having plan A, B, C, and D as alternatives. So believe me, this is not, you know, idle chatter here. We have to take a long look at this. If it's going to jeopardize our, our festival and the future of our festival, we have to look at, at possibly moving it. Let me answer on the Rapids. On the Rapids, we, we've already announced season ticket pricing for next year, and those people have already been sent that offer, and there has been no price change. So on the Rapids, what this would mean, and for those of you in the room that are sports enthusiasts, when you take an 8% price increase on a sports property, you do not increase your season ticket sales. So we would basically be, be forced to re-invoice individuals that have already paid what they believe to be the total cost for the next season's rapid season. They'd be getting re-invoiced for another 8% um, that goes towards this tax only, which I think would be, would be very unfortunate. And I just want to add um, to that question, to that question, Mike, on behalf of the people of Commerce City, we were so proud to be chosen to have the Mile High Music Festival in Commerce City. It's the absolute perfect venue for it. It worked out wonderfully. You couldn't have had a smoother, I mean, there was no, there were no issues for two straight days. It was just a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. And we are definitely pro-economic development. We want to be able to have wonderful opportunities come to our town. And we do not want this initiative to place our future with the festival or any other opportunities that we might have at risk. Thank you. We were very proud of the job that uh, my company and our, all the people in our office did on that. And uh, hope to, we will do it again next year. It just depends on the work. So Any other questions? You said yes. the Boys and the Girls Club are not behind this, but the people who are behind it, have you made an attempt to reach out to them? Um, or you said you were blindsided. I'm assuming that they have not made an attempt to reach out to you. I made an attempt to reach out to the gentleman that has been responsible for, for getting the 770 signatures. That's all you need to get on the ballot and talk to him for about an hour last week and mentioned that why didn't he call me because I would have talked about you know I, I'm, I'm sincere when I say I would have talked about putting together some kind of committee of both private and public to raise charity raise money not only for the boys and girls club I think if you do something like that it should be for all the local charities in Commerce City not just one um, which I've done before I've raised a ton of money for Children's Hospital for Denver School of the Arts for all sorts of charities but he basically said, well, he didn't think a ticket price like that would hurt attendance because he talked to two or three of his friends who went to the Eagle show and paid $150 for a ticket, and, he didn't, and they said if it was $170, it wouldn't matter. Well, I think I know a little bit more about the music business than he does. This is not an Eagle show. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love the Eagles, but it, that's a, a rather um, wealthy 60-something, 50-something crowd. These are a bunch of kids from 16 to 30 and then 30 somethings that are just getting up in their career, young parents, that every dollar really hurts, especially today. So, um, and, and he said, quote unquote, I wish I would have had this conversation. He said, yes, I called you six months ago and you called me back. I called him back and I never followed up with another phone call. And quote unquote, if I knew all of this on what the impact might be, I might have considered not putting on the ballot. But you have to ask him if he said that. But I'll take a lie detector test on that one. <laughs> uh, yes, Mr. Brown. Why, why did this blindside you? It was in front of the city council, and then it's been on the ballot for quite a while, it sounds um, like. Um, to be honest, um, I have spent a lot of time traveling in the last month. Also, I was fairly confident they wouldn't make the signatures because it seemed so absurd to me. And, and with the Boys and Girls Club not even on record as asking,